Thank you. It's lovely to be here today. Jeff's mentioned some of the accelerations that have happened within business over the last few months. Accelerations in moving storage and computing to the cloud, the convergence of technologies that are related to one another, more and more adoption of mobile technologies within the enterprise. Corona and related disruptions have caused forward-looking companies to think hard about their modernization strategies and move faster instead of slower. One of those accelerations has to do with how data smart your company is. Specifically, how quickly your company enables its teams to make really insightful decisions. Decisions based on analysis of relevant data. It's not a big coincidence, but my point of view is that the single most important set of technologies you should be investing in today are those that comprise your analytics infrastructure. Coincidentally, that happens to be the business of yellow brick. But that may also be the technology that determines whether your business survives. There are three factors that cause me to say this. Factor number one, speed of insight matters. The faster your business can answer the questions accurately and insightfully, the more likely it is to avoid pitfalls and take advantage of new opportunities. Factor number two, completeness of insight matters. The futurist Peter Drucker said that when you see a successful business, someone once made a courageous decision. The implication was that we never have a full set of data when we make decisions, but that's rapidly becoming not true. Today's systems, perhaps your competitors' systems, can ingest massive amounts of data in real time. Only companies that can analyze all of their data, no matter how old or new, no matter where it's stored, will really thrive. Factor number three, getting answers to the right people matters. Answers need to be immediately accessible to the people who need them the most, no matter where in your company they happen to be. You can't build a data-driven organization unless it has self-service access to data and analytics. People have to be able to explore and use that data to shape their own insights and become citizen data scientists. But to build an analytic system that provides instant insight to your organization, you have challenges to overcome. Challenges that have been decades in the making, and these are challenges that must be addressed now. First, the infrastructure that underpins data warehouses and data lakes is aging. We haven't seen new updates to this infrastructure for decades. Legacy data warehouses were considered a sophisticated technology when they were first developed nearly four decades ago. An entire ecosystem grew up around these warehouses and marts, in part because the needs of the warehouse were so complex. A company needed dozens of tools and resources to move data, normalize it, and prepare it for humans to consume. But that scenario doesn't work anymore, and warehouses simply can't keep up with increasing data volume and complexity real-time data, and large numbers of users. Even after costly hardware upgrades or cloud migrations and endless maintenance to squeeze out every last ounce of performance. And then there was Hadoop. A lot of us were really excited about Hadoop. Hadoop made big promises around big data. Hadoop was even going to kill data warehouses. Although the low-cost storage was a benefit for dumping data into, Hadoop was unable to fulfill the promise of enabling analytics at scale. Despite repeated attempts by open source and commercial solutions to add layer upon layer upon layer on top, getting actionable insights was just too slow and too complicated. Next, the move to the cloud has put all sorts of pressures on analytic systems. Businesses have moved many of their technical operations to the cloud for a variety of sound reasons. To achieve theoretically instant scalability, to modernize their IT operations, or to shift resources to more strategic tasks. But with this move has come a host of considerations. For example, where to store data can be problematic. Companies may have security or regulatory concerns that impact their ability to take advantage of the cloud's flexibility. Your company might also use multiple clouds for various data and analytics tools, so stitching those different environments together becomes a new integration project. And if you choose to keep some data on site and some in the cloud, you're setting up a hybrid situation. Cloud-only warehouses offer the scale you need, but performance can become unpredictable and cost per query is unacceptably high. After all, we all want our users to do more queries, not less. Furthermore, some workloads will be risky or impossible to migrate due to data gravity or security concerns. And for providers with native solutions, lock-in is a given. The final challenges that you're probably facing are with modern BI and data science tools. They've outpaced advances in the analytics infrastructure that supports them. These tools have become increasingly advanced in their ability to help us visualize answers. They even use AI to guide the very process of discovering new insights. While these tools can work just fine against traditional systems, the more data you feed them and the more speed you give them from the underlying warehouse, 
the more value you get out of them. We at Yellow Brick believe there are five imperatives that every company must follow as it builds a real-time answers system. First, and most importantly, within your organization, you have to build a culture of immediate answers. You must change your company's mindset to one in which the company demands answers from data in real time. This means you can't settle for systems that rely on batch processing, are limited to analyzing only historical data, or are encumbered by slow data movement. We at Yellowbrook are involved with one of the world's largest insurance companies. This company, like so many others, used to devote two days per month to processing claims. They'd often execute the processing over a weekend so as not to impact other users. But then regulatory and compliance changes mandated that they take a hard look at the speed and accuracy of their analysis. By modernizing their data warehouse, this company shortened its claim processing from two days per month to two hours per month. Absolutely incredible. I tell this story not because it's about a specific technology, but rather it's about a culture and mindset shift. Why wait for regulatory changes to insist that you have a culture of real-time answers? Don't wait. Insist on a culture of real-time answers now. Imperative number two is what I call smart innovation. Smart innovation means maintaining flexibility to make the right architectural decisions about analytics now and into the future, otherwise known as future-proofing. This concept is often associated with avoiding lock-in, but that's a very simplistic way to think about it. Actually, future-proofing derives from a commitment to standards and preserving the ability to make the right architectural choices for the right reasons at the right time. For example, committing to industry standard means you won't have to replace existing investments to rehire or retrain engineers or to create new data silos whenever you onboard a new platform. Industry standard APIs tend to stay that way for a very long time, making them good long-term bets for future innovation. As for architectural choices, we strongly believe that you shouldn't have to choose between on-premises and the cloud for deployment of your warehouse, nor should you have to choose a single cloud. Instead, you should have the agility to deploy and run analytic workloads wherever it makes the most sense, whether for economic, security, or data gravity reasons, and even build multi-cloud analytic applications if needs be. Imperative number three, it's just not OK anymore for the data warehouse to be down for a couple of days. Analytic platforms are now nearly as critical as transactional systems. Information is the lifeblood of business, and when the blood stops flowing, bad things happen. But for businesses with data transformation at the core of their value proposition, such as SaaS providers, even that metaphor understates the importance of data availability. You simply can't afford to entrust those functions to a data warehouse without robust high availability, fault tolerance, and disaster recovery. For those reasons, your business continuity strategy can't be an afterthought. Although it's really not an exciting topic for a startup, we continue to disproportionately invest engineering time in stability, availability, fault tolerance, and business continuity. Imperative number four, transform. Don't get there incrementally. If ever there was a time for transformation, it's now. Any analytic strategy that you're going to invest in must be transformative for you and for your customers. Incremental changes are a terrible way to get significant gains quickly. You'll never achieve real-time answers for your entire organization if you're bolting onto an existing legacy system or applying patches and point upgrades. Let me ask you a simple question about your data warehouse bill. What are you paying for? Are you paying for real-time answers? Are you paying for transformation? Are you paying to leap ahead of your competitors? Or are you using the same technology as them? Chances are you're using the same technology and paying for maintenance. I'm here to tell you that maintenance and transformation are not related. Maintenance means standing still. The root word of maintenance is to maintain or stasis. It means paying for current capabilities and nothing more. If you want to move forward, you have to move beyond maintenance. You have to insist that your budget pays for transformation. Another company that we're involved with called Tioco does something called revenue assurance on billing for 40% of all of the phone calls in the US. It's a core business process for its customers, yet Tioco couldn't meet its SLAs because of its legacy platform despite paying millions in maintenance. The company decided to transform. It didn't iterate, and in doing so, opened up the door to completely new possibilities. For imperative four, I remind you that history favors the bold. Imperative number five, operate at the speed of thought. Peter Drucker again said years ago, if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. But with the speed of change in information today, we may well update that adage to, if you can't make decisions in real time, you can't survive, because it's possible for us to measure everything. 
Fraud detection is the classic example here because latencies of minutes or even seconds defeat its entire purpose. The objective should be for fraudulent transactions to be rejected before processing is complete. The pandemic has made this imperative even more stark. In the retail world, we're seeing a clear line emerge between winners and losers. Those that most quickly adapt to e-commerce are the winners. That adaptation would be impossible without the ability to deeply understand inventory, supply chain, and consumer behavior. And you can't do that without instant access to lots of complex data at the speed of thought. It almost goes without saying that the ideal healthcare response to a pandemic, as we'll hear from Dr. Osterholm later, would be premised on very similar capabilities. But even in normal times, the pharmaceutical industry's Irum's law, which is Moore's law spelled backwards, states that the cost of developing a new drug roughly doubles every nine years. The only way through that problem is to radically improve our ability to predict outcomes through rapid data analysis on huge amounts of clinical data. Those are our five imperatives. Number one, build a culture of immediate answers that insists on providing real-time insights to your entire organization. Number two, employ smart innovation as your guide to help make architectural decisions and prepare for the hybrid cloud. Number three, insist on reliability and availability. Analytic systems are now considered business critical and as such must be treated that way. Number four, transform, don't be incremental. Stop paying millions in maintenance to do the same stuff as your competitors. And number five, move quickly and build a data platform for your users that operates at the speed of thought. That's what we believe and that's what we practice here at Yellowbrick. We believe that if you follow these imperatives to building an analytics infrastructure, you'll compete and win with the best of them, no matter how big or small. I leave you with one final thought, which is we shouldn't penalize real-time curiosity. I'll tell you what I mean by this. A while ago, we did a project with a company that makes snacks. The company had a logistics problem trying to ensure timely operation of the entire supply chain, from sourcing the raw ingredients, typically potatoes, to the manufacturing process and then onward distribution of the finished product. Efficiency of the supply chain and managing distribution according to customer demand naturally impacted the profitability of the business. A hiccup anywhere had an impact. This customer did an excellent job of database and schema design with fairly well normalized data, meaning their entire warehouse for a Fortune 500 company with sufficient historical data was only about 10 terabytes. Visibility to the live data in all the different departments was through Tableau dashboards and reports, all of which offered an ability to arbitrarily drill down into the data to uncover additional insights. There were typically around 1,000 users on the system at a time, and the data being consumed by a report ran to several terabytes. Managers in all parts of the business use this application continuously, but previously the company was constrained by the need to create materialized views and summaries in order to gain acceptable performance. Managers wanted to generate their own analytics and change and pivot the data at will, in essence to become citizen data scientists. However, they were constrained by doing so. As they imagined new queries, they were booted off the system by workload management rules due to missing materialized views, causing it to slow down too much. These managers gave up trying to become curious for asking questions of their data because change tickets had to be filed by the staff to add new materialized views to answer the queries turning exploratory peeps into data into processes that took days or longer, stifling the ability of the staff to have a larger impact. Our project with this company was to allow them to be curious and do it in real time. We allowed completely ad hoc analytics without materialization to enable the creativity of the company's staff. Nobody wants to wait for answers anymore. After all, if Google can search the whole internet in an instant, why can't I query my own data just as fast? Thank you. Welcome to Yellowbrick, the only modern data warehouse for hybrid cloud. 100 times faster performance, thousands of concurrent users, and petabytes of data. Get faster, richer, more accurate insights, all while saving millions in costs. Yellowbrick gives you the power to make the right decisions, the ones that vault your business ahead of the competition, now and in the future. Schedule a demo at yellowbrick.com.